sharing uh, the, the, the experience of Mozambique in the development of uh, DHIS2. Um, and we'll be able also to, to hear that uh, the Mozambique started in 2000 with uh, the process of implementation of DHIS 1.4 first, and then went through several stages until it reached, uh, or, or they started or to, to adopt the DHIS, the version two of DHIS2 official, uh, which is used at the moment uh, with different programs. So I will invite uh, Dr. Brana. She's heading the HMIS, um, I think uh, two years now, this is the second year, but uh, she had been, before going to the, the, to the HMIS, she has been leading the, the logistics. Um, and I think thanks to our, uh, we are able, for example, to, to, to have some logistic data, which is collected using other digital public goods to uh, which they are integrated in DHIS2. Um, then I will invite Dr. Brana to, uh, to, to sit here. And um, also uh, we'll be having uh, Dr. Amelia uh, Dipuve. She's um, uh, part of the EPI program. I think is a director or deputy director of the EPI program in Mozambique. Uh, the, we, at, the, at the moment, we are supposed to have also the, the, the director here, but they are uh, started with the mass campaign, poly campaign that started uh, this week. That's why um, we also selected this topic to be shared. How are they managing the, 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 the campaign, who, uh, the poly campaign using DHIS2? And also there are some other initiatives that came before uh, polio. So I will invite Amelia to also sit here. And um, uh, with the different, uh, let's say, needs of integrating data, the malaria program also uh, uh, decided or uh, because they, they were having also challenge with regard to data um, use, everything, and then they, they, the, the, com the component of data that was in DHIS2 was initial was not enough. Uh, it was only collecting the, 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 the number of people that were tested, treated, and then they decided also to integrate all the malaria component, including financial data. And then we created what, what they call a malaria data repository. So Ma Ma Mariana da Silva is here to share with us the experience um, related to this initiative of developing a malaria data repository. Um, because we we'll always um, have, the, uh, uh, the, there will be maybe a need to have some uh, translation here during the, the, the process. So I will invite uh, Emilio Moss, who is leading the, the research unit at South Digitus, also to come and uh, sit uh, in front, uh, the, yes. So um, to start, I think Dr. Brano will be the one starting the presentation and then we'll uh, uh, conduct the, 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 the whole process of implementation. I don't know if you are going to move the slides by yourself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then just Thank you. Okay, good morning. I'll be starting the presentation of the health information systems in Mozambique. So, Mozambique, uh, um, wait. Not moving. What's it? I should use the link. No, this was not working. Okay. So Mozambique Minister of Health adopted DHIS2 uh, as the main platform uh, and called uh, CISMA. CISMA means Health Information System for Monitoring and Evaluation. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it was before the DHIS2 implementation uh, and where we are coming from. So during the period between 2000 and 2004, uh, Mozambique had many attempts and many platforms, electronic platforms to improve the data management. Some of these were the SysPro, SIM, DHIS2 version 1.2, 1.4, and Modulo Basic. 
but uh, all of these uh, uh, electronic systems, they were not uh, match the expectations and the needs of the users. So we just took the lessons from that whole process and move to the next phase. So the let's see how it was the initial implementation. So we had the, the metadata uh, and all the data in model BASIP, and this was migrated to, H to DHIS2 database. Uh, and uh, the implementation approach switch from um, um, server spread across the districts and province to a centralized approach, a central server. Um, and uh, some programs and um, areas that were not included in the beginning of module base, they had the opportunity now to be included in the new version of the HIS2 or CISMA. And the facilities were reporting um, aggregated the, the facility level were reporting to the district aggregate information that was able to be visible. So we have um, this uh, image just to illustrate was what I was trying to explain. So at my left, it was model basic before. So you can see that it was a very comp complex uh, collection process from manual to district and then the district to province uh, up to the central. But uh, it took a lot of time to, to have this collection and to be able to see the information from the le below levels. So now we have at my right, the, the current scenario. Uh, you can have the collection from, you have the collection from the health facilities, but that can be electronic or manual where there are no conditions. But uh, once it's uh, collected on DHIS2, you can see immediately at the central level. So if you have uh, connectivity, it's uh, directly centralized in the um, central server. So this is how we are current now. And we improved a lot the visibility of our data and the health programs also increased a lot the performance of the indicators and and promote use of data, of course. So the initial uh, DHIS2 implementation um, brought a lot of advantages, uh, like I was saying. So reduce the time taken to produce the reports. Um, act, it was possible to access the data from all the facilities and for sev several periods, increase the quality of the, this data in terms of completeness, timeless. Uh, it was possible finally to have dashboards uh, to do these monitoring evaluations uh, um, performances uh, and uh, also simplify the process to uh, elaborate reports um, from the whole country. So to have a big picture of what was happening in all the yeah. health programs. So how was the process from moving to from aggregate to individual? So the need of individual data um, came. Uh, we, we start to receive a lot of pressure from the health programs. Um, they were satisfied with the with aggregated data, but there was a challenge to move to the patient individual level data. So the inpatient and TB module, they were the first ones to be uh, introduced in the tracker. Um, then we had the maternal neonatal mortal, mortality auditing and the maternity and birth modules. Um, this, the success of these uh, modules increased the demand. And now we are in the process of developing new modules uh, for routine immunization, for cancer registration, and uh, HIV recently after um, uh, analysis evaluation that was done in the maturity of the THIS2 system in Mozambique. So um, we have still we still have a lot of challenges as a country, but uh, this introduction of the individual models um, it was uh, it had a, a great impact because it was possible for the first time to have a report on the mortality. Uh, and the causes of the mortality in our hospitals. So currently over 90% <clears throat> of the deaths in the hospitals are registered individual and uh, coded with IC10. 
and uh, this is, is possible to, to, to access these reports. And this information is also available in the international platforms like WHO, UNICEF, and so on. So it is possible now to automatically provide this data recorded. And we also, uh, through the interoperability layer, we share this information with the Minister of Justice, uh, which will also increase the registration of the civil, the civil registration yeah, process that is on under uh, justice uh, responsibility. So one of the um, modules that um, was uh, had a lot of impact um, individual modules was the electronic integrated disease for surveillance. So this is an image of the process of the campaigns that use a lot uh, as my colleague will soon speak about. And uh, this module, the surveillance module, um, allows to follow all the outbreaks uh, that uh, have come to, to fragile many health systems, not only in Mozambique. Um, so we can use as timely disease detection, preparedness, and um, uh, appropriate response. So Mozambique, um, because it was committed to, to have this tool, um, developed this module with the program in the Minister of Health. And now it's possible to, to, to have a very, a more efficient, let's say, crisis response when you have a cyclone or um, uh, overflow or something like that. This is the tool, you have a cholera crisis. So you, have, you had COVID. So this was the tool that was uh, enabled Mozambique to follow what was happening in the field. So um, the country started with this digitalization surveil surveillance um, after the migration of the module basic, but was COVID pandemic that uh, make it uh, more visible. And we could see the potential of the, the, the system as a, as a tool. Currently this module uh, evolved and uh, we are now uh, looking at um, the management of many diseases uh, so many program surveillance data, uh, and we can this system can provide uh, real time um, basis data. So this is um, an example of um, what are the modules in the surveillance uh, mo module. So we have uh, the notification. We have some the vaccines. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stop here because this the, is the area that my colleague from the vaccines immunization program is going to take over and uh, dive you in the detail. Amelia, please come. Bon dia. Good morning. Bon dia. Good morning. Obrigada. Ah, uh, meu Thank nome you. é Amélia. Ah, uh, trabalho no programa alargado de vacinação em Moçambique. I'm Amélia Dupuy. Eu... I'm working at the expanded program of immunization in Mozambique. A minha apresentação vai ser em português porque não quero apenas partilhar a experiência de Moçambique no uso do DIS S2 a uh, nas campanhas, mas também quero partilhar o português com quem não sabe falar português. So my my presentation will be in Portuguese, not only because I want to uh, say something about Mozambique, but I want to also you to learn Portuguese. Uh, <laughs> uh, eu uh, uh, no dia de ontem uh, tivemos uma sessão com com os países lusófonos. E eu falei que Moçambique é um país muito bonito, é, gostamos de pessoas bonitas, tem uma, uma diversidade cultural muito grande, tem uma boa gastronomia e quem está interessado pode vir lá nos visitar e trazer boas práticas. So, yesterday we had a, a presentation with a, a track on lusophony. 
So I said that uh, Mozambique is a beautiful country with beautiful people. We have a nice food and uh, we invite you to come to visit Mozambique. Okay. And to share um, more good practice as well. Obrigado. <laughs> um, nós uh, adotamos o, o, o DGS-2 para apoiar o país na gestão de dados das campanhas. Uh, o, o Moçambique é muito bonito, mas infelizmente uh, tem passado por situações de, de surtos de, de doenças que são preveníveis pela vacinação. Moçambique, it's, uh, it's, we, we adopted the HS in Moçambique in order to manage the, the outbreak and the, all the health information system, but uh, unfortunately the country has been uh, um, kind of struggle with, the, with outbreak and disease and all these things. So. A quando da Covid era uma emergência para todo mundo e, e, e tivemos necessidade de, de adotar o DIS porque tínhamos estávamos uh, a produzir muita informação, tínhamos muitos dados uh, e não seria suficiente usar o papel para fazer a monitoria e a gestão de tanto dado que estava a ser produzido. Uh, during COVID, we it was uh, really very difficult because we've been using uh, paper systems and uh, we were kind of gathering lots of data and there was a need to really use electronic systems. O, nós já temos o, o, o Cisma, que é a plataforma uh, oficial para a gestão de dados, e no Cisma foi criado um subsistema para a gestão de dados das campanhas. We, we already has a Cisma, which stands for Health Information System for Monitoring and Evaluation. Uh, but then uh, during the, the, the COVID uh, uh, subsystem was uh, 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 developed in order to deal with the, the outbreaks. Yeah. Uh, toda a informação uh, das campanhas de vacinação, nós realizamos a campanha de vacinação do COVID de, de forma faseada e todos os dados eram geridos no DIS S2. Yeah, we 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 used um, to collect data from um, all the immunization program, and the data was collected to 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 DHS subsystem that was developed for that specific uh, needs. Essa plataforma permitiu nos a uh, ter dados de forma tempada. This this um, this uh, tool uh, allow us to get data on time. E com o mínimo de qualidade que a gente pretendia ter naquela altura de, de, de muita correria. With the, uh, a minimum quality that was needed during that uh, kind of difficult time. Uh, além do, do registro e da gestão dos dados no, 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 no DS2, uh, usamos também essa plataforma para a produção de certificados uh, de vacinação que era um, um requisito mandatório uh, no caso de, de, de viagens ou de comprovação que a pessoa realmente tomou a vacina de COVID. But, um, we also use this um, tool uh, not only to collect data but also to to issue the certificates because uh, during this time the certificate was needed for traveling, for example. Uh, usávamos também uh, essa plataforma ajudava nos sim a monitorar uh, quantos certificados eram produzidos onde é que eram produzidos por mês por dia e, e continuamos a, a reproduzir certificados para quem precisa e temos essa plataforma para monitorar uh, essa, essa 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 atividade the subsystem also help us to monitoring how many certificate was issued per day, per week, per month, where did this certificate were issued uh, in the country. And uh, that's what's really useful to us during that time. Uh, e logo depois da COVID, ou ainda no, no, no meio da COVID, uh, começamos a notificar casos da polio. E quando isso acontece, precisamos responder imediatamente. E a resposta foi campanha de vacinação. 
uh, during um, COVID, we also had a um, uh, notification with polio cases. Uh, when you have a polio cases, you have to really deal with that. We have to stop and deal with the, with polio. So then we start really to be engaged in the immunization campaign. Uh, o plano inicial era para realizar três rondas de, de, de campanhas de vacinação contra o polio, mas uh, uh, com a, a, a vigilância e, e buscas ativas de intensificação da vigilância epidemiológica, fomos notificando cada vez mais casos de polio e tivemos a necessidade de alargar cada vez mais o número de, de rondas de campanhas de polio. Um, the, the plan was to have a three, uh, three phase of, uh, of the campaign, but during the, the, the period we had many, many cases, so we had to, to uh, the epidemiological kind of surveillance in order to, to deal with the many cases that were there here during that time. Como já falei antes, a dificuldade que nós tínhamos na poli era a mesma que tínhamos na Covid, muitos dados, muitas comunidades, uh, e, e, e o dado era feito no papel, e passava de papel em papel a todos os níveis, e isso dificultava muito o, o nosso trabalho. As I said previously, uh, during COVID, we had uh, many cases with COVID, but also we had uh, many cases with polio. And uh, we were using a lot of papers for, for, for polio. And then it was very difficult really to deal with this situation with many uh, kind of uh, lots of data, but uh, using uh, paper, paper systems. Ah, e mais uma vez, em coordenação com a Saudígitos, que é o nosso parceiro no Ministério de Saúde, nessa plataforma do DS2, uh, houve necessidade, sim, de abrir-se um espaço no CISMA para a introdução de dados de diferentes rondas da polio. So during this time, with the partnership with the Saudi Egypt, who is uh, uh, our main uh, partner in developing this uh, information systems for for health, then there was a space uh, to develop uh, these subsystems for polio immunization. Ah. Sorry. Yeah. Foi desenhada uma plataforma muito simples. Uh, mas tão simples que era mesmo da capacidade da gestão do nível mais baixo, do nível da comunidade. Então, a comunidade, uh, o, o, o supervisor da equipe na comunidade, depois da vacinação, já fazia o registro num, num instrumento móvel como telefone e tablet dos dados de vacinação na comunidade e dessa forma já tinha essa informação imediata nos níveis subsequentes. That was so uh, very easy. I mean, uh, the, the application that uh, the subsystem that was developed was so easy and very clear for the, even for the lower level of community that they can collect data. And as soon as they were entering data at the um, community level, that data was accessed to the higher level of the ministry. Esse é o exemplo de alguns dashboards que, que a gente produzia there's an example uh, of dashboard no that was produced. No uh, nível provincial e no nível central, ao mesmo tempo. Então, a informação era introduzida na comunidade, o nível distrital, provincial e central, já poderiam baixar os dados a tempo real. Um, this is an example of dashboard that were produced. Uh, the data was introduced at the lower level of the community. At the provincial and the higher level of the ministry, they could access in, in real time uh, the information that we needed. Uh, a plataforma do, DIS, do DS2 uh, uh, é uma plataforma que estamos satisfeitos. Contudo, uh, ainda tem algumas lacunas. Uh, Moçambique tem comunidades extremamente distantes, isoladas. Uh, tem locais que não tem rede móvel e usando essas plataformas em, alguns, em algum momento perdemos alguma informação uh, que gostaríamos de ter nesse momento. Então, é um processo que precisamos de melhorar, mas estamos a apostar nessas plataformas pelas vantagens que temos, que temos visto. 
the um, the DH the DHS it's a very uh, useful and very good uh, uh, system, but because the country is uh, really widespread, so in some cases we in in some community we don't access to all data and uh, we need really to improve because not always we have uh, access to some of the data in very very kind of distant places. Estamos neste momento a, a, a querer mesmo emigrar no programa alargado de vacinação uh, do papel para o digital. E queremos implementar o registro eletrônico infantil lá da unidade sanitária e da brigada móvel, pensando nós que dessa forma vamos melhorar é, cada vez mais a qualidade de dados que, que, é, que é reportada e, e vamos melhorar o acesso e a visibilidade dessa informação que nós queremos. A Saudígito e outros parceiros que apoiam o programa, já estamos a trabalhar nisso e com muita expectativa é, que esse processo avance o quanto, o quanto antes e, e termos essa informação no tempo real e, e, e melhorarmos, claro, a, a, a qualidade de vida dos trabalhadores e das pessoas que vão receber a vacinação. So, uh, uh, this was long, well, it was very long, I think you understand. <laughs> so, uh, what she's saying is that uh, we really need to move uh, in order to implement fully the DHS, the platform to collect data for complete immunization. Uh, also to involve all different kind of subsystems that exist in the, in the in the immunization to DHS uh, because this is a, we have really access to, to, to the most important data uh, and then we can have a, a, a kind of a, a decision uh, on that program. E com isto quero agradecer pelo convite e espero que tenham aprendido um bocadinho de português que quis partilhar convosco. Obrigada. So I want to thank you very much for this opportunity that I was given and also I, I, um, I reinforce that you have to really learn Portuguese. <laughs> thank you, Amelia, for the Portuguese lesson. <laughs> so uh, as Amelia said, uh, the current challenge for many of the health programs is to be able to cover the community levels, the, the areas where we don't have health facilities uh, near. So the, the next module I'm going to talk about is the module of community health information system. That is something that uh, is already been uh, um, in the country, but uh, in the very, uh, confined, let's say, program. So the community health information system allows uh, community health workers to manage the patient information and the health data and to monitor what is what are the health trends uh, over time. So the implementation of a, a community health information system was key to, to ensure provision of health, pr primary health care reduce the fragmentation of the community platforms that are already in place in the country and create an integrated uh, community health information. So, like I said, we already have a, a experience with the LEPRA, LEPRA's program. Um, you can see in the right was a, um, a program that we've been using this uh, registration collection from the past years. But uh, with the new, um, and here you can see some of the, the, the information that we already are collecting in LEPRA. You can see the number of cases in the last uh, three months, uh, four, three quarters. And you can see where are the areas in the country that are more endemic uh, or have many cases. And you can follow uh, what, uh, what where you can you need to focus your supervision and uh, the healthcare uh, support so now we have a new um, new strategy for community health uh, subsystem and this uh, resident strategy has a pillar with a, a very clear objective 
that is establishing high health information surveillance system and monitoring evaluation the health actions in the communities with a multi-direction flow of information. So this new approach, this new strategy uh, bring, brought a lot of demand to the, um, the health information department because we need to, to evolve from the leprous data register to cover all, all other diseases and programs. So the integrated uh, community health information system is based on, in the HIS2, has been tested, uh, and includes uh, the digitalization of uh, all the package of the community agents and provides continuous follow-up uh, on the individuals at the household level. These are one of uh, the modules that the, the system has. You can see it allows you to... Um, to follow TB, uh, malaria, HIV, um, allows you to do prevention and promotion in the community, allows you to registration the births and the deaths, um, allows you to make a census of the household members. So, and um, these are our, the collection, how it goes, and also allows you to receive some notifications uh, about the, the follow-up that the health community also need to do in a daily basis. So, um, like I said, it's an integrated community health information system. So all the programs are present and related, including malaria that is going to now uh, explain us more in detail how this can be uh, very impactful in our healthcare system. Now I invite Mariana. Bon dia. Um, thank you for the opportunity. I will try to speak in English, so be patient. <laughs> but I know I have backup with the Dr. Emilio. Uh, my name is uh, Mariana da Silva, and I work uh, for malaria program in Mozambique. In the next few minutes, I'm going to present a summarize the programmatic view around the development of uh, an integrated malaria information storage system in Mozambique. Um, this is uh, a bit of contest. So in 2016, uh, a malaria surveillance uh, assessment was conducted and uh, noted major challenge with the data management which includes uh, multiple sources of data with different uh, definitions. As you can see on my right, uh, we have this picture with the Excel data coming from entomology, bed nets, IRS, and we also have commodities data. Uh, we have the AP information coming through the HMIS, <clears throat> and we, we have uh, supervision data and uh, we have uh, uh, data quality checks uh, data. So because of these multiple different definitions, uh, no standardization in terms of uh, reporting tools and indicators, uh, we noted that uh, we have a poor accessibility in terms of integration of all, this, all of this data. And also we have no automated output. So through the technical working group, uh, there is a, a decision to make and uh, to define one place where we can find all the uh, stakeholders can find all the malaria information in, in the same uh, platform. As I said, uh, in terms of solution, a malaria data repository was, was created based on DHIS2, and it was developed in accordance of uh, WHO repository guidelines. So this malaria repository uh, integrated uh, all the information system that was uh, in place, uh, which we call uh, CISMA, 
with the um, AP data and LMIS data, uh, which allows uh, for different electronic reporting activities not relevant for the system uh, and creation of new forms to, to capture all this information, such as uh, entomology, uh, vector control, uh, super integrated supervision, and also to include uh, information related to the to the finance. And uh, to to set it in place, we trained uh, about uh, eight hundred users all over the. these users with the tablets and airtime uh, in the monthly basis to ensure that uh, they can uh, they can conduct the activities and they can report uh, all this information on this uh, malaria repository platform so in terms of uh, the the impact that we have with all this data accommodate in the same platform we saw some uh, improvements in terms of uh, data completeness through the validation that was created in the in the platform, more specific for supervision, uh, integrated supervision and end to end to data and IRS data. We saw through this platform improvements in terms of uh, data submission times. Uh, where they can use the uh, own tablets and submit information uh, from the health facility and districts. Um, because we 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 gathering all this information in the same repository, it was um, it is now very simple to integrate all these data collections and to do the complex analysis that was difficult before this repository was set. And uh, we, we have uh, this uh, time consuming considering that the data was collected through different instruments. As you can see in this, uh, in this picture, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have uh, dashboards with the RDTs where it is collected uh, <clears throat> throughout patients. We have information uh, coming from the LMIS with the uh, consumption of ACTs. We have uh, uh, even information about the, the stocks on the, on the warehouse. So now we can, uh, we can uh, probably do this uh, uh, evaluation and it is available for all the, all the users. We also, as I said previous, we also create dashboards specific for financial tracking. And this was a specific for global fund commodities and non-commodities. And quarterly, we, we collect information coming for different partners contribution. And this is a, a one way to, to involve all, all the stakeholders and to at least to have this uh, finance information that you know it's uh, sometimes very sensitive to, to have and to the available in, in the program. So as a, a next steps, as I said, this is uh, some examples that I, I brought here, but we have uh, about uh, 25 dashboards uh, with all this information. So as the uh, next steps, we are, uh, are working in, in terms of define uh, the data use for district levels and health facility levels. And I was very excited on the yesterday and some sessions with the big data extraction. I think uh, there is a good opportunity for us to combine all these, uh, these tools and to, to maximize the data use that we know we have a lot on this malaria repository. So this is all that I, I wanted to share with you. Thank you. The last time. <laughs> okay, uh, again, me. 
So like Mariana said, uh, it's very important to have integrated information and have all the modules um, integrated in the same platform. That's why we're going to present what is uh, the uh, actual uh, overview of the, the health information system in the Minister of Health. So we can see we have the um, aggregated module, DHI2 in the middle, and we have all the modules that were developed the um, hospital or community health uh, system, the, uh, the malaria repository that Mariana spoke, the surveillance, and all these are connected and in the same um, <coughs> integration, they integrate information. Um, and we can come with a common dashboard, uh, but th there are also uh, systems from uh, other parts, like the Minister of Justice that have a uh, interoperability with the, um, with the intra-hospitaler. There are the logistic information uh, system that are also integrating now with the aggregated and allows us to have the, um, the products uh, consumption of for the different uh, programs and to follow up what are the, 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 the quantification and the distribution of these drugs related with the programmatic interventions. And we also have the human resources that it's now at the moment not very operational, but uh, the layer is there. They are now doing some um, updates, but is also uh, a current uh, process. So this is the overview, in the integration. And um, we are still working on the, um, to improve this integration and uh, with the various subsystems and uh, an interoperability platform was implemented uh, with the advantage of in changing the data analysis, elimination the, the, the data duplication and redundant, redundancy, improve the set accessibility, uh, in change the data quality, facilitates uh, collaboration and information sharing, and also uh, allows us to scale scalability and flexibility. So there is a link there. If you want to, to, to copy and see, you can see that we are really... Uh, bringing in this platform um, a integration information. Here are all the modules that we, I spoke about in the previous slide. We can see that are through this layer coming with the to DHIS2 uh, aggregation and we can see all the, the, the disaggregated information there uh, according with what you need. So we still have challenges, of course, and uh, some of these are related with the infrastructure, the hosting, the internet, the equipment, human resource training, and uh, the skills also in the IT uh, development and so on. We have also to, to face the emerging tools and platforms that sometimes are not well coordinated with the, the, the MOH. Um, we have some policies uh, that we need to update. Uh, and also we continue to coordinate all the investments that are um, available for age management information systems. Uh, in terms of perspectives, uh, we, we would like to continue to improve the data quality, um, improve the interoperability with the justice for British registration data, uh, establish a medical uh, record system that is very new. Like I said in the beginning, HIV, is one of the programs that is now demanding to have a specific tracking module for the patients. And also there is need to see what is happening with, with all the patients that come in in the health facilities, not only HIV, but the others, uh, how you can follow up and uh, also uh, bring them to the, to the health information system with the funding that uh, to see the weight they have in the, 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 the public uh, sector. So this is, a, is going to demand a lot of work from our side. We need to expand the community health information systems, the integrated one that I spoke previous. And of course, we need to improve the, the, the user's support through a help desk uh, system. It's a project that we started to, to, to talk about because we have a, big, a very big country. People are dispersed and we need to, to have a support, uh, a friendly, support to, to provide them. So data use, um, we would like to bring the data from this repository, the, the integration platform, 
uh, and with the interoperability layer expansion, uh, we, we are going to be able to promote the data democratization. What we want now is to be able to share all this information that we came through up to now, over 10 years. We have a lot of information, many programs. It's now the time to share it and to see, because if you don't use the information, you don't improve it. So now the next phase, the next challenge is really to um, share this information and uh, all the stakeholders, all the programs, all the managers can see it, can uh, um, advise us if we are bringing the right information or there are need of other information. So we come with a, um, a close circle collaboration. Uh, another perspective is in the governance. Uh, we, we need to lead the process of planning and financing. The, it's one of the key lessons we have from all this process implementing the HI2. We need to invest more resources in the capacity building at all levels. Um, we have a decentralized system now uh, in terms of administrative in the country. So district, province, and central are different. So we need to bring all of them together. We need to continue to improve the data center and build the redundancy to, 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 be, to secure the information that we have. And here, there is a play with other public institutions that also come to help the Minister of Health. Uh, we need to continue to develop, improve, and promote the standards, the policies, and the strategies to be aligned. Everyone that works in the health information system should obey, follow the same rules. And this was is one of the weaknesses because uh, I spoke previously in the challenge, but we are in the way of approving um, two policies and uh, uh, the strategic plan for health information system for the next five years. So another is to improve the collaboration coordination among all the stakeholders and uh, partners in, in the system, of course. So to the technical committees and technical meetings that we, we need to emphasize and make sure that they happen. This is it. Thank you very much for your attention and for the invitation.